Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my 2023 reading wrap up. That sounds so crazy to even be saying I can't believe we're here. <laughs> about to talk about the 80 books. The 80 books, guys, I read in 2023. I probably won't shut up about that at least until February. So I didn't know if I wanted to do a video where I talk about every single book I read last year or if I want to do the end of the year book tag. And I just kind of decided on doing an overall review of all the books I read, but also incorporating maybe little bits of the end of the year book tag. So we'll kind of see how it goes. I wanted to structure this video in a way that was easier for me to get the reviews out there to you guys, but also in a way where I'm not sitting here for five hours talking about every single book I read. If you want any like in-depth details about any of the books we're gonna talk about today, comment down below any of your questions or you guys can go check out any of my 2023 reading vlogs. I covered every single book on this card in one type of vlog or another. Anything you can think of, I probably did it last year. So definitely go check out those if you want more in-depth reviews, if you want real-time reactions from me. But for today's video and just the sake of my sanity, I'm probably going to do very quick 15 to 30 second reviews on all the books. I'm gonna give you guys the rating. And yeah, I'm super excited. One of my New Year's resolutions for 2023 was to branch out a little bit and try different genres. And I actually dove pretty deep into the fantasy genre last year. And I'm so proud of myself. And I'm so happy I did too. Because I love it so much, guys. Also, the romance and fantasy. Could we just like talk about that for a second? Romance and fantasy is so much better than just normal romance books. I said what I said. Before we hop in to my 2023 reading wrap up, I just want to say a quick thank you to Skillshare for partnering with me in today's video. I talk about them all the time on my channel because it's something I genuinely love and use all the time. But if you haven't heard of them before, Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry pros across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and more. And something I've been getting asked so much about lately, especially with us rolling into 2024, is how to start a YouTube channel, how to start a booktube channel and Skillshare actually offers an incredible learning path that will help you get started with your channel and growing it. This learning path includes six classes that start off with the initial basics of starting a channel all the way to finding your ideal audience. And something I think is so cool about this learning path and really helpful is it will cover all the basic equipment you need but it also covers a lot of the editing process which is like the main part of doing YouTube. Most of your time and work that goes into YouTube is spent editing so this learning path actually covers free editing softwares and and teaches you all the editing tricks. My favorite class out of the learning path though was the secrets to growing a successful YouTube channel. I thought this was the most helpful because it really ties everything you learn together and shows you how to grow. This pathway is absolutely incredible for those of you out there who want to start your own YouTube channel in 2024. And the first 500 people to use my link down below will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare for free. You can take this learning path for free by using the link down below. So definitely hop on it. Only the first 500 people to use my link will get that free month and start 2024 off with a bang start that youtube channel that you've been talking about for so long there's literally no better time than right now to start chasing your dreams with all that being said though we are gonna hop right into my 2023 reading wrap up i am so excited to talk about all these books with you guys like i said i read a total of 80 books last year i'm actually gonna quickly go over some of my basic reading stats for you guys because it's kind of interesting to take a look at them my shortest book that i read in 2023 it was Fracture Me by Tara Moffey. It was 72 pages and that was just a shorty little novella. Then my longest book I read was A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Maas. It was 757 pages, which is crazy to me because before 2023, that book terrified me because it was so long. So I'm so proud of myself for tackling it last year, but also it was one of my favorite books of 2023. So love that for me. My average book length in 2023 was 399 pages. The book I read that was the most shelved by people on Goodreads was A Court of Thorns and Roses. It's actually crazy. It was shelved by almost 4 million people and I feel like Akatar has always been a super popular series but I feel like last year specifically so many people kind of hopped on it. The least shelved book that I read last year was Last Chance Books by Kelsey Rodkey. 
That book was kind of a miss for me and we'll talk about it when we get there. My average rating for 2023 was a four star rating. I rarely read a book that I don't like. And then the highest rated on Goodreads that I read was A Court of Mist and Fury as it should be. And then I headed over to myyearnbooks.com and I did a whole wrap up with them. I did it before December though, so only logged 75 books. Minutes read for 75 books was 50,420 minutes. That's a lot of minutes. That's 800 in 40 hours which is 35 days so that's basically a whole month of reading which is actually really cool to look at that's a really cool stat and then my top genres was romance with 71 books contemporary with 47 books and fantasy with 37 books which I didn't read like any mystery thrillers in 2023 so I think going into 2024 that might be one of my reading goals to maybe branch out into that genre my top author was Tara Moffey and that's simply because I tackled the entire show Shatter Me series last year. And then my reading vibes was hopelessly romantic. Of course, are we surprised? Probably not. And then some of my five star reads are at the bottom, which it's so funny because Powerless and Divine Rivals we'll talk about them when we get there but those are like my basic reading stats for 2023 but now we're gonna hop right into my wrap-up so I divided my books up into different categories the first one we're gonna tackle is book series I read this year because I read so many book series and completed them this year so we're gonna hop right into it and we're gonna start with the once upon a broken heart series by Stephanie Garber I did this backwards just so you guys know you're actually supposed to read the Caraval series and then jump into these books I haven't read those books yet so I kind of it backwards but nonetheless I absolutely love this series if I had to rate this series as a whole five stars this series was absolutely incredible if we're talking specific book ratings the first book in the series once upon a broken heart was four stars the ballad of never after was five stars and then a curse for true love was four stars this was the best book in the series in my opinion just because it's when we get a lot of romancing between the two main characters a lot of people were disappointed with the last book in the series mainly because we didn't get our favorite character as much as we were hoping to get him and that's why a lot of people were really disappointed with this but nonetheless I still really enjoyed this book and I think getting the different point of views in this book really tied the whole story together and the ending of it was just absolutely perfect. I'm forever obsessed with Evangeline and Jax. These books were absolutely amazing though. They're beautifully written. Some of my favorite quotes ever came out of these. The romance in here is absolutely beautiful. I was living for Evangeline and Jax every second of the way. I also really loved the little enemies to lovers we kind of got in here as well as that forbidden love trope but these were amazing five stars if you're looking to get into the fantasy genre this year I would highly recommend these books because they're super easy going they're fast-paced they're easy to keep up with these books were amazing I could not recommend them enough next up we have the Kings of Sin series by Anna Hong this is the same author of the Twisted series which I tackled in 2022 one of my favorite favorite series of that year these are just the first three books in the series the fourth one is set to come out I in the spring of this year. If I were to rate the series as a whole, it'd be a four star rating. If we're going book by book, King of Wrath was four stars. King of Pride was five stars. And it's so funny because a lot of people didn't like this one. It was my favorite. And then King of Greed was 3.5 for me. The series tackles billionaires falling in love in New York City. And it does tie together to the Twisted series. So you get small little glimpses into those characters. King of Wrath is an arranged marriage as well as an enemies to lovers. There's a lot of blackmail in here and crazy stuff that happens but it's pretty cool because we meet the main character Dante in the last book of the Twisted series and it was really cool to see what his story was all about with Vivian because we get glimpses of them throughout the Twisted series and you're kind of always wondering like why they are the way they are and why they hate each other so much so this was a pretty fun read I was a little underwhelmed. King of Pride tells the story of Kai and Isabella. A lot of people said they didn't really like this one because they found it to be really boring. It was like living for Kai and Isabella because in this book our main character Kai is not really like the other male characters we get out of her books. He is like a goody two-shoes. He's kind of nerdy. He always has his head in the books. If he's not working, he's basically reading and I think that's why I loved him so much. But like I said, he's the complete opposite of the other guys because he does not want to use blackmail to get what he wants. He doesn't use violence or trickery or anything like that. He wants to do everything the right way and buy the books and he wants to win fair and square. So I think that's why I kind of enjoyed this because it was so different compared to the other books. And Kai and Isabella story was just so sweet. They were adorable. I love them. And then King of Greed was like... 
it was okay i think going into it i knew i wasn't gonna love it too much because it is a second chance trope and basically dominic in this story is a workaholic and he literally neglects his wife he's always missing important dates eventually his wife ends up leaving him and this whole book basically is him trying to win her back but he's just like so slow with it and he keeps messing up over and over again and it just kind of got annoying dominic just wasn't my favorite guy to come out of that universe but nonetheless i thought the story was okay next up we have fourth wing and iron flame by rebecca yaros fourth wing is one of the books that kind of took the internet by storm this year and it sold out everywhere after reading it i could totally see the hype it wound up being five stars for me everything you love about fantasy is basically in this book we get a little bit of an enemies to lovers in here there's a lot of like betrayal in here honestly this book was absolutely beautiful i loved it and it was so much fun then jumping in to the second book which is iron flame this was kind of a letdown in a way and it's a pretty big book especially in comparison to this one and i feel like for it being this big it got boring i feel like the two main characters in this book were fighting the entire time and it was just like the same fight over and over again so i think that's why i didn't really like it i also got really lost with the storyline in this i didn't really understand what the main goal of this book really was and then at the end of it it definitely redeemed itself for me i would say my final rating of this would be a 3.5 i always complain about fantasy books leaving off on the craziest cliffhangers and it driving me crazy but low-key cliffhangers at the end of fantasy books are what i live for far overall i would say this is like a four star series i'm interested to see what book three will kind of entail because book two was a little bit of a letdown and like i said it was just like kind of repetitive it was the same fight over and over again moving on we have the maple hills series these are just the first two books in the series a third one i think is set to come out in the fall of 2024 can't remember i just know we're getting another one soon book one is icebreaker it tells the story of stassi and nate and it's actually about a hockey player and an ice skater falling in love they kind of start off as friends they go into enemies and then they turn into lovers this is basically like a feel-good fluffy romance it was another book that people didn't really like because they said there was no main storyline or plot to it all but i feel like that's almost expected with fluffy romances like they're just kind of there to make you happy i think nonetheless i absolutely ate this book up it was five stars and then the second book is a wildfire and although it takes place in the same world and it's about a hockey player it takes place during the summertime at like this camp so we actually don't get hockey vibes in this and i was really surprised at how much i loved it this tells a story of russ and aurora they basically have a one night stand at college before the semester ends and then they expect to never see each other again until like a week or two later they show up to the same camp and they find out that they're camp counselors together so they spend the entire summer trying to stay away from one another there's definitely like this tension between the two of them and they're definitely catching feelings but it's against the rules to mingle with other counselors it's important that they don't get together but it's obviously really hard for them because they're catching feelings so this ended up being five stars as well overall this series so far is a five star series they are feel good fluffy romances if you're looking for something like that and something that's fast paced if you like hockey romances you will absolutely love these i also always say if you are a fan of al kennedy books you'll probably eat those books up because they're very similar next up we have the akatar series my gosh, I can't believe I tackled this series this year. I'm so proud of myself. I didn't think it was going to happen because these books are pretty chunky. Before reading these books, I was just used to reading itty bitty romances like this. So jumping into this series, I was definitely very overwhelmed. I was nervous. They were like the first fantasy books I really read. So it was a lot to take in. But nonetheless, I completed it and I absolutely loved every second of it. This is definitely a five star series series for me. They're incredible. I definitely understand the hype around them. I understand the hype around Sarah J Maas in general. Her writing style can be a lot at times, but the story she tells, it's just incredible. I fell in love with every single character. Starting with the first book, A Court of Thorns and Roses, we are introduced to our main character, Feyre, and this is a five star for me. I really enjoyed it, even though it took me two, three times? I think it took me three times total. I think I tried to read this book in 2021. It didn't work. I tried to read it in 2022 did not work and then i finally powered through in the beginning of 2023 and i ended up loving it book two is a court of mist and fury this was easily five stars i loved it i'm still debating if this is my favorite book out of the series or not this is when the series really takes off in my opinion and we really start to get the romancing book three is a court of wings and ruin i call this the political book we are talking lots of politics in this book 
And believe it or not, I loved it. I ate it up. I feel like this book just gave me a better understanding of the entire world and I loved it. Book four is A Court of Frost and Starlight. This is like a fun little holiday novella. It's super short compared to the other one. This takes place during the winter solstice, which in the book is basically like the holiday time. So we get to see all our favorite characters come together to celebrate the holiday season and it's adorable. It was only three stars for me because it was so short. I almost wished it was like a little bit longer. Last but not least, we have A Court of Silver Flames and this was five stars. I finished off 2023 with this book and I loved this so, so much. I thought this was a great redemption story for Nesta and I fell in love with her character. I fell in love with Cassian. Everything about this was just so, so good. Next up, we have the first three books in the Addicted series by Krista and Becca Ritchie. There are so many more books that are a part of this series as well as the Calloway Sister series that kind of like intertwine with them. But I put them in this category because I read the first three core books basically. So overall, I'd say this is like a 3.5 series for me. It's a friends to lovers show up in here. It covers two people who are battling addiction. These books mainly cover them going from friends to lovers, but also trying to overcome their addictions. These books talk about recovery and like a whole bunch of stuff like that. I did enjoy these books and I can see why they're hyped up a lot, but I just like never read anything like that before. So I think that's why it was a little hard for me to kind of get into. I'm really happy to go into 2024 because I'm going to start jumping into the Calloway Sister series, which I feel like I'm gonna like more. And I feel like once I read the Calloway Sister series, I'll probably appreciate Lily and Lo more. Next up, we have the Dirty Air series by Lauren Asher. This is about F1 drivers finding love. And these were the first books I read by Lauren Asher. She is one of my favorite authors to actually come out of 2023. Overall, the series is four stars for me. Book one tells the story of Maya and Noah. I think this was like a 3.5 for me just because I kind of wanted more out of them. The book is kind of short. Book two was five stars for me. It tells the story of Sophie and Liam. It's a friends to lovers romance, which I feel like 2023 was also the year of me falling in love with the friends to lovers trope. That was never my favorite trope for some reason, but I read so many of them in 2023 that I just fell in love with it. Sophie is the daughter to Liam's boss, basically, who runs like the F1 team. She finds herself falling for Liam and they're adorable. I think this is like the friends to lovers book that made me really fall in love with the trope. I also annotated the heck out of this book as well because there were so many cute quotes that came out of it. Then we have Wrecked. This tells the story of Elena and Jax. Jax is like the bad boy of F1 and he's always getting in trouble and doing things he shouldn't be. So Elena is sent in to basically clean him up so he doesn't get his sponsors taken away and Jax does not like that. And so we have an enemies to lovers in here and I was living for it. It was five stars. It's very mental health heavy. It covers a lot of very sensitive topics. I just remember like feeling for those characters. The last book is Redeemed. This tells the story of Chloe and Santi who is the brother to Maya. This book started off really well and I feel like it had a lot of potential but I just didn't really enjoy Chloe as a character. I thought she was really immature and she made a lot of weird mistakes so I think I ended up reading this 3.5 stars. Next up we have the Chestnut Spring series. I completed this series in 2023 and it's actually probably my favorite romance series to come out of the year. Elsie Silver is another one of the authors that I fell in love with last year and she also got me obsessed with cowboy aesthetic, country aesthetic. At one point when I was reading these books, I literally wanted to move to a little ranch in the country. That's how great these books were. Overall, five star rating for this entire series. They are so beautifully written. I am obsessed with every character. The found family in this series is just one of my favorite found families, honestly. I will never stop thinking about all these couples. Flawless is book one. It was five stars. It tells the story of Rhett and Summer. Very similar to Wrecked by Lauren Asher. Rhett is getting into a lot of trouble and Summer basically comes to babysit him and clean up his act. But he's like a professional bull rider. It's a little bit of an enemies to lovers just because he doesn't like having a babysitter. But it was so, so good. Elsie Silver is literally one of my favorite romance authors. Book two is Heartless. It tells the story of Cade who is the older brother to Rhett and he basically runs like the ranch back home. He is a single dad and he needs help during the summertime so he can kind of keep up with the farm. So Summer asked her best friend Willow to come down from the city and help Kate out by being a nanny for the summer and 
we know what happens and I love it. I don't know why, but there's something about that single parent slash nanny trope that I just eat up. I really love that. Book three is Powerless. This is a friends to lovers trope and it tells the story of Jasper who's best friends with the Eaton boys. He is like a professional hockey player. Sloan is like a professional ballerina. Their story is adorable. They are longtime best friends who have honestly always been in love with one another basically and it was beautiful. Five stars. Reckless tells the story of Theo and Winter. Theo is the bull riding prodigy to Rhett. He embodies golden retriever vibes. He is so stinking cute. And then Winter is the older sister to Summer who throughout the first three books we just don't really like. She seems really cold and mean. You get to see a whole different light of her and it's kind of like her redemption story. This is also a secret baby trope which I had never read before and loved this. Five stars. I didn't think I was gonna love it because Summer wasn't my favorite and then I loved it. Shocker. And then the last book is Hopeless. This tells the story of Bo Ian. I think the middle brother of the Ian boys and he's away for most of the books because he's actually in the army. So in this book we're kind of reading about him coming back and going through like this recovery stage not being in battle all the time. This is also a fake engagement trope because he makes a pact with this girl Bailey who is kind of outcasted in town. If she had his last name she basically wouldn't be outcasted. So they make this weird bet with one another and they become fake engaged to one another and it's adorable five stars love this entire series it literally makes me so happy i will always be thinking about them and i definitely want to try and reread the books probably in like the spring slash summertime this year just because the vibes they give off during the spring and summer literally unmatched moving on to our second tier of the cart we have the brutal birthright series by sophie lark these were the first dark romances i had ever read and i actually really really enjoyed them. I was super surprised at how much I enjoyed these books. The whole series revolves around two mafia families, an Italian mafia family and an Irish mafia family. Book one covers their alliance with one another. It's about the youngest Gallo getting married to the oldest Griffin and it's an enemies to lovers. It's an arranged marriage. It's forced proximity, mafia vibes. It's so fun. I loved every second of this book. Overall, the series is probably a four star for me. I genuinely loved every single book except the last one which we'll talk about in a second but this was four stars I really enjoyed it and it kind of sets up the rest of the books for us book two is stolen air I could not believe how much I enjoyed this book because it's a little bit disturbing not gonna lie this is basically a beauty and the beast reimagining and I really really loved it so four stars savage lover gives off Fast and Furious vibes. If you love cars, if you love those movies, you will absolutely love this book. It was so much fun. It was very different compared to the first two books as well because it's so car heavy. So I really enjoyed it. it. Ended up being four stars. Bloody Heart tells the story of Dante, who is the oldest Gallo. This is basically a second chance trope, and I really, really enjoyed it. I think for a second chance trope, it was amazing. So four stars. Broken Vow tells the story of Riona and Raylan, and this book it caught me off guard because it is not like any of the other books in the series. It kind of gives off Chestnut Springs vibes, which for being a dark mafia romance book, I did not see that coming. Like it totally caught me off guard when all of a sudden they're in a small town. That reminds me of Chestnut Springs and Raylan turns out to be a little small town cowboy. This was adorable. Five stars. I love it. If you just want to read one book in the series, read this book. The last book is Heavy Crown. It tells the story of Sebastian and Yelena. This book was not my favorite. I did not like Yelena. I didn't even really like Sebastian, honestly. I thought he was just making really bad mistakes over and over again, and Yelena just was not it. I did not like her character. I was really upset with this book and super sad with how things went, but it does segue into her other series. It actually tells the stories of all of their children which is really cool. This was like two stars. Then we have the Shatter Me series by Tara Moffey. I tackled this entire series last year and it's a series that has been recommended to me since the beginning of my booktube channel and I'm honestly upset that it took me so long to get into it because I loved it. This was a five star series for me. It was absolutely amazing. It's a dystopian based type of read. There's an enemies to lovers in here. There's a love triangle in here. There's so much action and adventure and there's magic and powers. And just like all this cool stuff. I really, really love these books. Five stars, this whole series. Book one is Shatter Me. It was five stars. We're introduced to our main character, Julia, where her touch is lethal. So if she actually touches someone, she causes so much harm to them that 
it could kill them. Pretty outcasted in this book. She's very insecure. She feels like there's no point for her to be there. The hierarchy though in this dystopian world basically brings her in and wants to use her as a weapon. A lot of weird stuff happens in here. We have Unite Me, which is two novellas. Destroy Me is told from Warner's point of view and Fracture Me is told from Adam's point of view. These are our two main male characters in the beginning of the series. Destroy Me, it was three stars. Fracture Me, it was two stars. No words for what happens with those boys. Book two is Unravel Me. This is when we're kind of diving into the real adventure of the story. We're exploring Juliet's powers. We're meeting new people. We're getting a bit of a found family trope in here, which I love. Ignite Me, which was book three. This is my favorite book out of the series still. It was five stars. Everything changes and you fall in love. Restore Me is book four. Crazy, crazy stuff happens in this book. It's actually crazy because I didn't know this until I was almost done with the series, but originally the series ended with Ignite Me and then Terra Moffy came back a few years later, I believe, and she decided to add on to the series and she really went off. Five stars. We have Find Me, which is Shadow Me and Reveal Me. These are novellas. Four stars simply because they're told from Kenji's point of view and I love Kenji. Defy Me. Things just keep getting weirder. If you think you know what's happening in the series and you know what's going to happen, throw it out the window because you have no idea what's going to happen. Four stars. Imagine Me, which is book six. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know what happened in this book. I loved it though. Four stars. It was close to being a five star, but then some stuff got really weird and I was like, Ugh, I don't know. And last but not least, we have Believe Me, The Happily Ever After that we have just been literally waiting for the entire series. I rated it four stars because I simply just wanted more. I wanted more of this. Shatter Me series is amazing. I cannot recommend it enough. If you're super into those dystopian type movies back in like, gosh, like 2012, 2013, I'm talking Divergent, the Hunger Games, Maze Runner. I feel like that time period was like the time of dystopian movies though. You will love the Shatter Me series if you loved all of those. Next up we have the Knock Em Out series by Lucy Score. I started reading these books I think in like the summertime and I have to say the vibes were immaculate. Overall rating for the series I'd say four stars. These books are really chunky like these are chunky books and for some reason I feel like every time I finish these books I was just kind of like what? Like I wanted something more, but like how much more could there be? You know what I mean? Like I almost feel like these books were so big and filled of like unnecessary content sometimes. Overall, it was a four star series for me. I still really enjoyed it. I love these characters. I'm also a big sucker for the small town trope, which I'm sure you guys can probably tell. Book one is Things We Never Got Over. It was four stars. It tells the story of Knox and Naomi. It's a grumpy meets sunshine. It's small town trope. It's a found family trope. It's a single parent trope kind of. This was really cute except at times I just thought that Knox was a little bit too grumpy if that's possible. He was almost so grumpy to the point that he was just mean. Book two is Things We Hide From The Light. This was a four stars and tells the story of Nash and Lena. Nash is the younger brother to Knox and he's like the chief of police. He's a goody two shoes and Lena is like the complete opposite. She gets into a lot of trouble. She's like a bad girl basically. So this is an opposites attract romance and it was pretty fun. I actually really enjoyed it. It was four stars. And the last book is Things We Left Behind. This book I was so excited for because the main character Sloan is this cutie little librarian in town but she's also really badass so I was so excited for her story and it was cute. This was still a four star for me but I was just expecting so much more and I was hoping it was going to be the five star of the series but it just wasn't. Next up we have The Never After Novels by Emily McIntyre. I am so torn on what to rate this series as a whole. If I could take out Wretched and Twisted, it would be a five star series because I love Hooked, Scarred, and Cross so, so much. I'm gonna settle at a four star series. These books are dark fairy tale reimaginings. Book one is Hooked and it's a Peter Pan reimagining. The main character in it is James Hook. And I am not kidding you when I say you fall hard for the villains in these books. It's actually concerning how good they are. This was five stars. I absolutely love it. I also have to say if you're looking to get into any of these books I'm about to talk about, definitely check for trigger warnings and stuff because there's some really twisted crazy things that happen in them that could be triggering to people and then also definitely 18 plus read. Book two is Scar. This is a Lion King reimagining. The main character Tristan is based off the villain Scar. Again, you just fall in love with him in this book. I loved every 
every page of this book. I honestly can see myself rereading Hooked and Scarred in 2024 because I just want to go back to those worlds and those characters. But five stars, obviously. We took a weird turn. This is a Wizard of Oz reimagining. Two stars. It was a little bit too much for me. There's some weird stuff in here. I have to say, I think that's why I didn't really enjoy this book because of the spice. It was like too much. You know what I mean? Then we jumped into Twisted. I was very nervous at first because I felt like we were going down a similar path that we went down in Wretched. And then it did kind of redeem itself at the end. I ended up rating it three stars. This is an Aladdin reimagining where the main character Julian in this book is based off of Jafar. Which could be another reason why I couldn't get into this one too. I just can't stand Jafar. Then we get into Crossed. And this is a Hunchback of Notre Dame reimagining which I enjoyed growing up but it was never like my favorite. I don't no, there was something weird about this book that I was just like there's no way I'm gonna like it and honestly guys I think it's my favorite book out of the series this is wow wow it's amazing it was five stars I loved every second of it these are all standalones too so you can jump into whichever one you want we have the dreamland billionaire series by Lauren Asher this series guys I love this series so much. I could see myself rereading these also this year. Definitely a five-star series for me. The whole series revolves around three brothers who are all billionaires. Their grandfather passes away and in his will he leaves tasks for them all to complete in order to receive their inheritance. Their grandfather was also like the creator of Dreamland which is a play off of Disney which is why I love them so much and it's why I ate them up. So in book one Rowan's task is to basically come up with a new ride or a change to Dreamland that will make a difference in the world and make a difference for the people who are visiting every year. Absolutely incredible. Four stars. Beautiful. Book two is all about Declan. He is a workaholic and his task from his grandfather is to find a wife and have kids within a year. His assistant and him kind of come up with a pact to become fake engaged in order to get his inheritance and it's just so so good. I was living for this whole story. Four stars. Loved it. Then we get into book three which is the final offer. This is the story of Cal who is the youngest brother and his task is to go back to Lake Wisteria and sell their old like summer home. When he gets there he finds his childhood best friend slash lover living in the house. This is a second chance trope. This is a friends to lovers trope. It's a small town trope and everything about it is just so stinking cute. I was living for it. It was five stars. This was just perfect. It was a great conclusion to a great series. And the last series I read in 2023 was the Select series by Kiara Cass. I actually don't have the physical books anymore because I ended up giving them away. That series is like a solid three star series for me I think. I really enjoyed it. I always say that if you like The Bachelor and The Bachelorette you will probably love the selection series because it's basically The Bachelor but it takes place in like a royal setting at a castle with the prince and kings and queens. It was really fun. I just got like annoyed in book two and book three. Book one was pretty solid. I think it was a four star for me. Book two and book three was probably like two and three stars because the main character America Singer is just really annoying in my opinion in book two and book three. She just doesn't know what she wants. She kind of keeps going back and forth between guys. There's a love triangle in the books. It drove me crazy. She just kept making weird choices in my opinion. So that series was like a three star for me. I know some people love it and I think if I was in middle school or high school I probably would have really really loved it but reading them now I was just kind of underwhelmed and anxious all the time for America. <laughs> now we are going to hop in to book I've read in 2023 that were disappointing for me. They were a little disappointing. They are books that I thought I was going to love either based on the author, the cover, whatever it may be and they just weren't hits for me unfortunately and that's okay. It happens. We have some misses but the first one we have is Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. She is still one of my favorite authors and honestly thinking about this book now I think if I went back and reread it right now I think I would probably boost it up to a three star but right now it is a two star rating for me. I love Allie Hazelwood's writing. I love her characters and I love her romance but this was really boring for me. I read it at a really slow pace. I couldn't get into it. There was something that was off for me in this book so it was only two stars but it doesn't reflect how I feel about Allie Hazelwood as a whole because she's still one of my favorite authors. Next up we have The Do-Over by Lynn Painter. This was also two stars. I <laughs> it's a really cute YA romance especially 
during Valentine's Day. It's super repetitive, which is like the point of the story because you get a Groundhog Day trope in here where the main character is reliving the same day over and over again. I think like the first three or four days in this story, it's just exactly the same for the most part and it was really boring. The Summer of Broken Rules by Kael Walder. This was also two stars. I had so many high hopes for this book because a lot of people loved it. I couldn't get on board with it. It was just really boring in my opinion. It seemed like another story I had read before just like with different characters. I just, I don't know. I just didn't really like it. Then we have The Mistake by L. Kennedy. This was so disappointing. It was two stars for me and I was so let down by this because the first book in the series, which is The Deal, was one of my favorite books of 2022 and this was just so boring in my opinion. I'd say this is like a second chance trope and the main character, John Logan, basically gets a girl and loses a girl and he tries to win the girl back and he's just like not my favorite. I also didn't like how in the middle of it all the book kept referencing like someone else that he was in love with or used to be in love with. Like I don't know this book was just not it for me personally and I was really disappointed because I really really love the deal. Then we have My Dark Romeo. This was such a letdown guys. I mean look how beautiful this cover is. And it was two stars like come on so disappointing i thought i was gonna like it because it's a dark romance i just didn't like it i thought it was really boring but romeo was super super mean to dallas throughout the entire story and i kind of just didn't like that they were together because he was so mean romeo was really mean and he would call her names and just like say really bad things but dallas was also like really stuck up i just didn't like that book it was not it. Then we have Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. This was two stars, unfortunately, which this is like the second book after it happened one summer, and I really enjoyed that book, so I thought I was gonna love this one, and this one was cute, but it just like, it didn't really hit for me. I liked it, but it's not something that I went crazy over. Tessa Bailey is definitely one of those authors I keep revisiting and trying to get into, but it just never works out for me, unfortunately. Then we have Last Chance Books by Kelsey Rodkey. This book was two stars. It was very disappointing. I originally picked it up from Barnes because of how cute the book cover was. It was just kind of boring. It's about two bookstores that are basically competing. There's one that's a local bookstore and the other one is a chain bookstore. It was just like not as fun and eventful as I thought it was going to be. And I also thought that the female main character was super immature and just kind of annoying. Then I read Red Queen. This was two stars. I think I didn't like it that much because I read it back to back with the selection series and I feel like it's a very very similar. I think if I were to go back now and maybe reread it it might be a three star but it just wasn't it for me. And last but not least I read My Killer Vacation. This was also by Tessa Bailey. It was like a short sweet little summer romance. It's a grumpy meet sunshine. The bounty hunter is so grumpy. He's so grumpy to the point where he's like just being mean. And then I also think that there's a lot of things that were said in that book that were just like too corny for me. Like it got to a point where I'm like, okay, this is like weird. I don't, I don't think I could read this, but I did finish it and it was two stars. Our last category of my wrap up are books I just enjoyed in 2023. Books that I really liked that I would definitely recommend to other people. First up, we have Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer. When I first read this book, I rated a 3.5. I'm actually bummed it up to a four star rating because I can't stop thinking about this book honestly. It's so cute. It gives off fairy tale vibes except you're rooting for the villain in this story. It's about this girl Evie who is the assistant to the villain and this book was so cute. I originally rated it 3.5 stars because throughout the whole story there's so much tension between the assistant and the villain but nothing ever happens and then the way it leaves off left off on a cliffhanger naturally and we won't see the next book in this series I think until late 2024 so I was frustrated and I basically angry read it at 3.5 but it's definitely a four star for me I loved this book I love the characters I'm so excited to see what book two has in store but yeah if you're looking for a fun little fantasy fairy tale read where you're rooting for the villain this is it next up we have Magnolia Parks and Daisy Hate so I read Magnolia Parks I think in the summertime crazy Crazy, crazy adventure that this book was. It was five stars. So my best advice is to not go into this 
thinking it's a romance because it's simply not. The best way I can put it for people who want to get into this is it's Gossip Girl, but make it British basically. And it was so crazy. It's a lot of going back and forth. I think because it felt so much like Gossip Girl, I think that's why I enjoyed it so much. And I jumped in to Daisy Hates. Five stars. I think I'm going to be a Daisy Hates girl. You're either a Magnolia Parks girl or Daisy Hates girl. I think I'm going to be a Daisy Hates girl because wow, this was just so good. And I have to say while reading this book, I low-key started to hate Magnolia Parks. Like that sounds so bad, but I really, I really could not with Magnolia in this book. So I really enjoyed these books. Nonetheless, I'm excited to read the next two books in the series. Then we have Beach Read. This was five stars. This is a super hyped up Emily Henry book that I kind of put off for a super long time because I have never been one of the girls to get into Emily Henry, but this book actually was amazing. And reading it during the summertime, the vibes, the vibes were immaculate. It was beautiful. There are some beautiful quotes that I took out of it. I loved it. Five stars. Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher. This is her newest book from her newest series, which is the Lakefront Billionaire series. I ended up rating it four stars. It's a childhood friends to enemies to lovers trope, I believe. And basically it's about this grumpy billionaire named Julian who has kind of always kept tabs on Dahlia. But when she comes back home after a lot of crazy stuff happens, they're kind of thrown together and kind of just watch their whole relationship play out. I'm really excited to see what's in store for the other characters and the other books in the series because Lauren Asher is just an incredible author. We have Happy Place by Emily Henry. This was five stars. I also read this in the summer. It was so beautiful. I sobbed while reading this book. That's how beautiful it was. Definitely a book I see myself rereading this year as well just because the story and the people in this book just really, really get you. Then we have Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. This was five stars. I freaking ate this book up, guys. I love Allie Hazelwood. Hazelwood. Like that's why I was so let down with Love on the Brain because I love her books usually and this was one that I just was obsessed with. It was five stars. The chemistry between the two main characters was beautiful. I loved the little enemies to lovers we get in here. Beautiful. Then we have Check and Mate, which is also by Allie Hazelwood. This is actually her YA debut and I also ate this book up. It was four stars for me and I loved every second of it. Reading about chess players and reading about the moves they're making and the competitions they're going into like it was just so much fun for me. For the YA debate I do understand why people are saying this isn't really a YA. I feel like there has to be another genre in books that is for 18 to like 25 year olds maybe because I feel like this is perfect for that age range but I think anyone below 18 this is like maybe a little inappropriate. Last but not least we have come to my favorite reads. My favorite. My favorite reads of 2023. Originally I only had one book and then in the fall I actually read another book that I just couldn't pick between the two. They are definitely tied for first place. These are books that I consider my infinity reads which I get asked about all the time. People are like what's an infinity read? They are books that are like my all-time favorite books basically. They are better than five-star books in my opinion. They are books that I literally display on my walls <laughs> in my room in office and stuff like that. That. My first one, which I'm sure you guys already know, Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. This is one of my infinity reads for 2023. It is one of the best books to come out of 2023 in my opinion. I think it also won a few awards. This is just so beautifully written. The whole storyline concept of it all is so beautiful. Our main characters are incredible. The balance between the romance in this book and also the war and politics that are happening. Oh my goodness, like <laughs> I was sobbing majority of this book. That's how beautiful it was. It really tugs at your heartstrings. You fall so in love with Iris and Roman. The magic in this story too is just so cool in my opinion. The magic typewriters, how they're writing to one another. I will never stop talking about this book. Definitely going on the shelf next to Archer's Voice, which was my favorite read of 2022. And then last but not least, we have Powerless by Lauren Roberts. She is my second Infinity read, my second favorite book of 2023. This book 
book left me speechless. I am obsessed with it. I wish it was longer. I'm sad that it's not longer. <laughs> you really, really love The Hunger Games. You will eat this book up because it's basically The Hunger Games, but on steroids. Like, everything about it is so perfect. The two main characters, Peyton and Kai, their chemistry is the best chemistry I think I've ever read about, honestly. Like, you feel their love for one another in this book, and it's so beautiful. It's so beautifully written. The whole premise of the book is just really cool and fun. There's basically these trials that take place. People compete in them and whoever wins at the end gets rewarded. I don't think I'll ever stop thinking about this book. And the second book, which is Reckless, is actually coming out in the summer? Maybe in the fall? I don't know, but I can't wait. I'm definitely going to be waiting in line to buy that book. I am so happy about this book and I'm so happy I found it randomly and gave it a chance. If you would have told me in the beginning of 2023 that my favorite books to come out of the year would be fantasy books. I'd be like, no way. And look at us now. That is all for my 2023 reading wrap up. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. I hope this was an okay wrap up for you guys. I try not to go too in depth about every story because I know it gets very repetitive and kind of boring. So I mainly just wanted to share my reviews with you and my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed it though. And I hope it was helpful. If you take any books away from today's video, Please take these away if you haven't read them yet. They are absolutely amazing. They're also not like hard, difficult reads. They're super easy going. They're fast paced. Cannot recommend those books enough. Going into 2024, I definitely have a lot of goals. I set my reading goal on Goodreads for 85 books this year. I think we can easily do it. At first I set it to 100 books, but then I realized that's a little too crazy for me. So I went back down to 85. And if we read more, we read more. I also want to branch out more this Year. I want to read more mystery thrillers. I definitely want to keep going with the fantasy genre. I think it is so incredible. It's so fun and different. And yeah, that's basically it for me. I feel like I've been talking for so long. I think I've been talking for almost two hours. So I'm going to end it out here. I love you guys so, so much. Let me know down below what your reading goal for 2024 is. And I'll see you guys in my next video.